What's up everyone? Today we're kicking off a new project. It is the small engine budget-based dyno. In this episode, I'm going to be covering what a dyno does, the design of the dyno that we're building, along with some costs and things like that. Let's get started. My name's Eric and this is Dirty Elbows Garage. Wait, wait, wait. Hold off on the music. Don't want to jump into that just yet. I want to get everybody on the same page of what a dyno is. Now, dyno is short for dynamometer, and the dynamometer does not measure power. It measures work, and it keeps track of time, and so it's able to develop a rate of work, and a rate of work is actually what power is. Now that we got that covered, I'm gonna crank the music back up, and I'm gonna draw up the layout for the dyno itself and kind of go over the components, how they interface, and what exactly it's going to be. Almost everything here that you see is part of the loading side of what the dyno is. It doesn't cover the DAC side except for this one comment up here uh, that references the moment arm. So just to kind of go through the components, you have an engine and it's turning a pump. What the hydraulic pump is going to do is it's going to pick up oil from the re reservoir, it's going to send it to a valve. Now this valve is going to be a flow control valve and as we restrict the flow control valve, it's going to create pressure. This red or hot spot is what's going to actually generate load on the engine. Now, past the valve, I have a cooler because that energy has to go somewhere. As soon as you build up that pressure and then it gets to the other side of the valve, there's no pressure there. It runs freely through the system. That energy that the pump is putting into the system has to go somewhere. And typically that's sent out as heat. So the heat in the system would taken out with a cooler. So the reason why I've removed the cooler is because this is a budget-based dyno and coolers are some of the most expensive parts of it. The, just the bare minimum, you don't need that. You can get one, two, maybe three runs. We'll find out together how many data samples you can gather before the system's going to get too hot. We're gonna keep an eye on the oil temperature. Definitely don't want it to exceed a certain range. After the oil enters the reservoir, it just kind of starts the process over again. So the dyno is actually designed to handle up to 20 horsepower. So the pump, the valve, and the entire system is going to have to take that into account. Flow data acquisition equipment is actually pretty expensive. So again, with the budget mindset, I'm going to avoid that and I'm going with a moment arm. Let's jump right into the CAD design and work out some of the details. I've got the engine, a uh, pump, I've got a moment arm, I've got rotary encoder that I'm going to use to pick up my RPM. The things I don't have pictured are the flow control valve and the reservoir. So let me go through how this is going to work. Starting with the component breakdown, you've got the mainframe. Here's my engine. The shaft is going to spin in a counterclockwise direction, spinning my input sprocket to my pump shaft. So this is going to start spinning around which is going to turn my pump in a clockwise direction. As this rotates, my rotary encoder, as I mentioned before, is going to pick up my RPM value. I don't have the mount drawn in for that guy yet, but I'll get there. The pump is going to then start moving fluid as this shaft rotates. Now you've got an inlet and an outlet port on the other side. As the flow control valve closed, this pump is going to want to rotate in the direction that the shaft is turning. To resist that rotation is this moment arm. 
This moment arm is going to push down on this load cell. While the load cell picks up the force, this arm contacts that load cell at a determined distance away from the axis of rotation. So I can actually have a moment or a torque. So right now, this is set up to be one foot away. My offset is one foot. With the rotary encoder's RPM and the load cell's force, I'll be able to calculate the power that's being drawn out of the engine to turn the system. This pump is sized to be 1.22 cubic inches. It's got the pressure spec and the RPM spec that's going to work in the range of horsepower that I'm looking to calculate. So that's how I selected that. Excluding the engine, we are looking at right around $550 for all the parts that you see well, and the ones that you don't. So comparatively to other off-the-shelf dynos that you can buy, that's sitting right around about 10% of the cost of other dynos. I've seen them cost upwards of $5,000 for other small engine dynos. That's it in a nutshell. The next steps are going to be add in hardware and actually order some of these components. That way I can verify the model and make sure that everything that I have modeled is exactly as I'm going to see it as it shows up. That way I can move forward with the construction of the frame and get everything bolted together and tested. Stay tuned. Stick around for the next episode, which should be coming out after the parts show up. Yeah, lots more to come. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know below. Uh, definitely give us a like and a subscribe and all that good YouTube stuff. Thanks for watching.